Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for watching. If you are liking this story, don't forget to like and subscribe. These drinks are bad. Naruto cried in anguish. Come on, Mira Jane. Bring some good stuff. Mira Jane huffed. Well, you're the one who gave Urza liquor. She destroyed all of the good stuff. Apparently, the famed Titania was not very good at holding her liquor. It only took half a cup to get her drunk beyond belief. Naruto sighed and started to drink the rather low-quality scotch. He started to choke as the memory of his clone being crushed flooded his mind. Mir Jane, in a panic, started to slap his back as hard as she could, which wasn't very hard at all. Holy shit, Naruto said lowly as he coughed. Hey, what the hell is wrong with you, Dash? He turned to Mira and whispered, what's his name? Macau, she whispered back. Macau, you killed my clone. Said man waved an apology before continuing to build the guild, being a bit more careful. Mira giggled at the action, and Naruto started to chuckle. Okay, the redhead said, that was good. We just tag-teamed that guy with ruthless precision. Obviously in dash, her eyes widened. Laxus, you're back again. Naruto smiled at the barrel in his arms. Oh my goodness. I don't know who you are, but you brought alcohol. He got up and extended his hand. I'm Naruto Namikes, and you look like a badass. Laxus raised an eyebrow and set the barrel down. You're the one who defeated Arya in a few minutes and broke the Phantom Guild. The redhead chuckled a bit sheepishly. It's not my fault the giant castle was so weak. And Arya was a bit of a pushover also. Laxus looked like he was very well contemplating whether or not to punch the redhead or shake his hand. After a few tense seconds, he extended his own hand. A collective sigh of relief rang through the guild. Why do I look like a badass? Naruto's front of hair and his eyes flashed blonde and blue, so only Laxus could really see it. All blondes are badass, so are redheads. I look like this because it reminds me of my mother. Laxus suddenly recognized him. You are the yellow flash. What? Mira said in confusion, not noticing Naruto's twitch at the word, you are the yellow flash? Naruto nodded, but, but, you're not yellow. She finished both lamely and cutely. Naruto shrugged and gestured to his coat, which was currently orange with black flames, it depends on the coat and other circumstances. Laxus sparked, did you really destroy the cursed island? Naruto smirked, he had rep, not a single speck was left. Laxus, fight me. Before Natsu could tackle the S-ranked mage, a shadow clone grabbed him by the collar. Stop it, Iendi. You'll mess up the Gue Dash. He froze and looked at his creator, who was glaring death at him. Iendi. Natsu questioned loudly, who the hell is Iendi? The clone tried to find an answer, but the original Naruto drove his fist into the clone's head, making it dispel. These things are only parts of my consciousness, not exactly fully there. Naruto. Natsu pointed a finger at him. Fight me also. And make another fireball. It was the greatest thing I've ever eaten. Oi. Naruto slapped the finger out of the air, pointing as impolite. Inwardly, he was grateful the Dragon Slayer seemingly forgot about the mistake his clone made, fighting being on the top of his mind. Laxus had no intention of talking to Natsu and left the conversation, heading towards a bench to sit down. He ducked his head right before Natsu went flying over him, the Dragon Slayer being thrown across the temporary seating area by Naruto. Naruto turned his head, now for the dash, he froze. Where did it go? He started to look around frantically for the barrel of alcohol. No, no, no. It did not run away. Please wear it, I dash. His eyes narrowed. Kana. He said with venom. He sniffed the air for a little before his head snapped to Makarov's temporary office. He sprinted towards it, knocking the door down. Hey. Makarov yelled. What was that for? Naruto's eyes snapped to the brown-haired figure drinking in the corner. That is mine. He said coldly. You see that? He pointed to the destroyed door. I barreled the door down for that barrel. His dark look faded as he giggled. That was a good one. No, it wasn't. Makarov said with a glare. Naruto was then hit by a barrel. The empty one Kana just threw. Ah, that was very good. I, I Naruto looked destroyed. I, I will. His pocket started to glow. He pulled out the communication lacrima from his coat pocket. Hello? Hi there, Naruto, Seagrain said, looking as dignified as ever. There is a favor I need to ask. A favor or a mission? Was it a friend thing or a job thing? Seagrain shrugged. Mission. It's an interesting one. So I need you and some very strong mages. Makarov approached the redhead. What is it? You're here too, Makarov. Good. I will only need to explain this once. Go on. A dragon. We think it was made by Zeref. Naruto froze and Makarov looked shell-shocked. All of the dragons disappeared. I know. Seagrain looked grim. But Zeref was Zeref. And we at the council trust the yellow flash to deal with this. The council? Naruto started. Are you? Altair and I, obviously. 
Naruto looked to the corner of the room. Kana was still there, staring. Kana, I need to not mention this to Natsu at all. He'll go insane. She nodded mutely. Makarov spoke. I have an idea for a team. It will no doubt be one of the strongest teams in all of our guild. Good. You'll need the strongest you can offer. Look at us. Naruto said happily as he looped his arms around his two teammates' shoulders. We are the three amigos. All you need to do is take that it off, Misty. Laxus looked like he wanted to kill himself, and Mistigan sighed deeply. Of course, Makarov had to put the three of them together. Mistigan was fine with Naruto, but Laxus? The combination of Laxus' arrogance and Naruto's pure asshole behavior was too much for the prince. Yeah, Laxus said gruffly, take it off. I already know what you look like, and I'm sure Red does also. Mistigan sighed again and took his hood off, flipping his hair to set it in place. Naruto laughed. Yes. Now we'll get all the girls. His eyes sparkled. The idea is for my books. What? Mistigan looked confused. Books? Naruto grinned. Oh, I'm sure you've seen them before. The Great Ika Ika series. Written by Erosenin. My pen name. Of course, it wasn't plagiarism since Jiraiya wrote the books, and Erosenin was on the cover, which was his name, maybe not officially, so it was fine in Naruto's books, literally. Laxus looked like he wanted to die. His group? The Thunder God tribe. May be annoying at times, but this was a whole new level. And the fact that his new teammate was the writer of the dirtiest books in existence was only making it worse. Good God, the lightning user said. What? Naruto questioned. It's basically an autobiography of my life, only that it only shows my sexual endeavors. Not all the other badass stuff. He looked thoughtful. Maybe an actual autobiography. You know what? Naruto yelled loudly. I'm gonna write a full-blown biography about myself. The journey of. Mima. Mima Uzumaki. The blonde badass from the town of Kanoha. Kicking ass with his words of silk and fist of steel. He grinned at the thought. He could republish the failure of his first book, have his namesake, tale of an utterly gutsy shinobi, be the prequel. I wouldn't read it, Laxus stated rudely. Naruto frowned. Oh, come on. You have no idea how utterly amazing my life has been. Maybe the shinobi world didn't like tale of an utterly gutsy ninja, but the mage world? They would love it. Mistigan looked at him a bit blandly. I honestly don't doubt your life has been full of excitement. It's the best explanation for your utter insanity. Well, Naruto cried, being double teamed by my two partners. Why didn't I come with Mira and Kana instead? Because Mira Jane lost her powers and Kana's weak. Naruto looked at Laxus a bit incredulously. Eh? Mira Jane lost powers? Mistigan joined in. Also, you probably spent the entire time trying to bed both of them. The mission would be lost. Hey. Naruto said defensively, I'm not that bad. He shrugged, he could be professional. I'm only like that forward with Altair, but she just begs for that kind of attention. The entire last part was him muttering to himself, and his two allies decided to ignore him. Wait. Laxus actually started a conversation. The Ika Ika series has been being released for much longer than you've been alive. His grandfather once told him about how he waited in line for days when he was young. Oh, you don't know, do you? Naruto looked at Mistigan. He really doesn't know? Makarov didn't tell him? The prince only shrugged, not knowing what to say. Know what? His grandfather keeping secrets from him? Laxus felt his ever-present rage soar. I dash, Naruto gestured to himself, am immortal. You may have heard of me. I'm quite the horror story, being the red devil and all. Laxus stopped walking and stared. Naruto grinned at him as Laxus looked at him deeply. He then started to channel his magic and fired a lightning bolt at him. Naruto's eyes widened as he was hit in the face and knocked to the ground. Holy shit. He clutched his face. Ow, ow, ow. He sat up and glared at Laxus, tears streaming from his face. That really hurt. Holy Senju, my beautiful face. I'm gonna have to dress like Kakashi now. You're fine, Mistigan pointed out. Not a single scratch. He then looked at Laxus. You are done. Not a question. He wasn't gonna let Laxus attack again. Laxus looked at the man whom he had actually heard about in horror stories. An arrogant, jovial, womanizing asshole. Yes, I'm done. He started to walk. I'm not saying sorry though. Naruto glared at him. Well, I have until we get into seven to make you. Laxus growled as he stepped into yet another lump of mud, the entirety of his knee sinking below into the wet dirt. Stop it. He yelled at his redhead companion. I know you're making it mud. What? Naruto said as he activated one of his earth release techniques once more, making Laxus step into another mud pile. I think it's fate saying screw you for hurting Naruto's beautiful face. Or, Laxus started threateningly as he sparked. It's all symbolism. Me stepping in this shit is foreshadowing for when I'm going to step on the piece of shit you are. On his next step, the ground suddenly broke, 
and Laxus found himself sinking into the ground until only his head wasn't submerged. He gasped for air as he looked to the sky. Holy crap, Naruto said in shock. I guess that symbolism was all wrong. He turned away and giggled at the effectiveness of his modified quicksand technique. Mystigan eyed his sunken teammate before sighing, Naruto, be an adult and get him out. He looked up at the setting sun. We still have an hour or so until we get to the next town, and I do not want to camp tonight. We're a group of S-class mages, Naruto said as he lifted Laxus out of the mud. Unless it's Acnologia, I don't think anyone will be messing with us while we're camping and get away. Laxus looked at his completely ruined clothing and pulled off his earphones. These are expensive, he stated angrily as he tried to wipe some mud off them. These are coming out of your pay. What? Naruto yelled. I didn't get your heat dash. He stopped suddenly. I mean... Fate didn't get your head muddy. Those things will still work with a bit of mud on them. Even the redhead knew that the look in Laxus' eyes meant, I will destroy you if you try to argue. So he merely sighed and nodded dejectedly. My poor bank account. How will I support myself? Isn't Ika Ika a multi-million dollar book franchise? Mystigan asked. I saw movie posters in the last town we went to. Apparently, it's coming out soon. Nah, Naruto said. The poster has no people on it. That's because the movie has been in production for years but I have to find, and properly test, any actresses for the parts. And so far, there just hasn't been any with the right. He tried to find the word, pop maybe? Like standout beauty and skills that elevate them from the rest. But it's still a multi-million dollar franchise, right? Mystigan really didn't care about the movie at all. He was probably the only male who didn't care to see it. He just wanted to know about the total gross profit the redhead made. Naruto shrugged. There are a few zeros, like seven or eight of them. I have to check my books. He suddenly smirked. Get it? Check my books. Check books. He started to laugh loudly to himself until he could barely breathe. Oh my god. He said in between pants, I am so funny. He didn't know how long he laughed to himself, but when he looked around for his teammates, both of them were gone. Guys? He asked looking around. Hey guys? Naruto looked at the cave in front of him. Did it meet the requirements to be a definitely some scary shit happening in their cave? Large. Check. Unnaturally dark. Check. Making your body scream, get the hell away. Check. Yup. Naruto said to his companions, this is probably the evil cave of doom and dragons. Laxus gave him a dry look. It's the only cave in the entire mountain range. The unsung words of you idiot hung in the air. Well, that was another way to test it. Naruto personally liked his way better. Then let's go. Naruto said jubilantly, and go slay the foul beast of the cave of doom. As he finished, a projectile pierced his chest. Well then, that is not nice at all. He fell over. Mystigan and Laxus swung around and fired a giant beam of lightning and energy, frying whatever shot their teammate. Whatever it used to be was now a pile of burning ash on the ground. Ow. Naruto said as he stood up perfectly fine, a purple diamond on his forehead disappearing. That really hurt. Internally he frowned deeply. His carelessness made him resort to using the strength of a hundred technique, aka Tsunade's ultimate healing move. Of course, it didn't do much to an immortal, just drained him like a bitch, probably a side effect of it not aging him. Are you alright? Mystigan asked alertly. Naruto nodded. I'm really lucky to be wearing my red coat. My blood fits in perfectly. Laxus stared at the pile that used to be an enemy. What was that? Naruto sniffed the air. Smell that? Yeah. It smelled like disinfectant. Like alcohol. Naruto had a sarcastic smile on his face. That, my friends. He looked up to the cave a giant platoon of figures running out. Well, that's an army of demons, not what I'm really talking about. He looked behind the mountain, a scaly head appearing. That is what I'm talking about. One of Xerif's more interesting creations. Known in legends as the cannibal. The cannibal? Laxus said in mild shock. Naruto sighed, though he really is a dash, the monster emerged. Hydra. The Aetherius, one of Xerif's creations, was easily over a hundred meters tall the actual height unknown due to the mountain covering much of its body. It had three snake-like heads, each with ferocious teeth like a lion. The vicious look was coupled with wicked yellow eyes with red pupils. Its long head snaked down. Naruto smirked at that, snaking into a hidden body. Naruto knew behind the mountain it had an alligator-like body with six legs. And he also knew that the pink-tinted teeth were a mix of blood and extremely poisonous venom. Its name is Shia if you're wondering. I hate to ask why, Mystigan said quietly as he eyed the beast. But why is it called the cannibal? Naruto didn't need to answer as the two heads on the side suddenly snapped to the head in the middle, sinking their teeth into the middle head. The middle head roared as it was consumed by its own body. The pinkish blood erupted like a waterfall from its stump neck. A few seconds later, two more heads sprouted from the stump, 
making the total four. That's why, Naruto said plainly. Every head cut off gets two more grown. It also likes the taste of its own blood. How? Was more than a mumble than anything. The creature was beyond belief. Would you believe me if I said me and Zeref went to a museum and saw a story about the Hydra? Then I got him drunk for the first time and dash? He pointed to the beast? That happened? No. Well? Naruto pointed to the horde of demons. Those are wannabe devils from the demon realm. You two should be fine. He grinned. I get the big guy over there. Will you be alright? Naruto's face gained a bit of bloodlust. That thing is nothing but a love child of Zeref and whiskey. Hence the smell. I'll deal with it. Naruto stood on top of the mountain with a cave in it. Behind it was Shia in a giant valley. It looked rather breathtaking, with a small lake and waterfall along with bountiful nature, but the giant snake monster ruined the view. Hey Shia, Naruto called out. The multiple heads snapped towards him. Avlash Naruto Afna. Naruto actually forgot. It didn't really speak English or any language very well. Shia, I heard you ate people. They tasted take good ads YSGA. They tasted good, yeah. Naruto actually felt a bit disappointed he understood that. Hishia. Naruto yelled slowly. I'm gonna kill you now, all right? All right? New I kill you, asshole. Naruto jumped off the cliff, raisin shuriken in hand. Take this, you freak. He threw the energy weapon at Shia, who stood there and took it in his back. The Hydra looked at his back for a moment before turning back. Tas tingles. It tingled? He forgot the Hydra had unbelievably dense and durable skin. New plan, it seems. As Naruto fell through the air, he used a blast of wind to propel him forward. Ultra Big Rasengan. The ball of condensed chakra in his hand expanded into massive proportions. He slammed it into one of Shia's heads, destroying the head part completely. To his chagrin, two more heads grew, making the total number five. He needed more firepower, aka Karama. Naruto's eyes widened as one of Shia's heads started to produce energy, and a large scale energy beam erupted from its jaws. Oh shit. Naruto extended his arms in front of him. Horation, guiding thunder. The air around him seemingly bent as the energy beam was absorbed in front of him. Naruto mentally thanked his father for the technique as the beam disappeared, being sent to a small island a few hundred kilometers out in the sea and no doubt destroying it. The Hydra looked confused and Naruto took the opportunity to activate his takeover magic. Hello there, Naruto. The deep, loud, and definitely not Kurama-sounding voice blasted in his mind. Ah, crap. Naruto cried at the yelling in his head. What the hell? Who the hell dash? He recognized the chakra inside of him. Son. Yes, it is I, Son Goku. Naruto gritted his teeth at the loud voice of the four-tailed ape, quiet down, son. I'm right here. Sorry. Oops, I mean. Sorry. It's fine. Naruto used the Horation to get back on top of the mountain. He stuck to the wall so that he was hidden from Shia. What are you doing here? And how? He asked as he watched Laxus electrocute a large group of demons. Karama is in an intense poker game with Father, Gyuki, Isabu, and Kokuo. Since he was busy, he asked me to go. And I still owe you a debt from the statue. What if I was in trouble? Karama would ditch me for poker. The idea of that actually wasn't that unrealistic. Aren't you a god? If a god died, he or she would merely return to the god realm for a while. We never proved if I was a god. Only a mortal. And I'm not gonna ride my life on the chance I could be a god and I could be able to enter the god realm. He honestly doubted he was anywhere near a god. He was just a mortal. Oh well. At least I can come anytime. Naruto frowned at the thought. So you can just go into my body? He did not sound very pleased. We gave you our chakra long ago. We are still linked. Oh, oh. A thought suddenly appeared in Naruto's head. Wait so Matatabi can come also. He said excitedly, yes. Hey, you weren't excited when I came. Oh, no offense. It's just Matatabi is the most down-to-earth and normal one out of the nine of you. She's pretty cool, despite the fire. A thought passed through his head, and he suddenly shivered. Oh god. Does that mean Shikaku and Saiken can come also? If they really wanted to. Not that the redhead didn't like them. He liked all of the tail beasts. It was just that Shikaku was frigging insane beyond belief and Saiken was weird beyond belief. Fine. I can deal with that. He hopped back over the mountain. Now we burn this loser. Yes. Let us fight. Take this, Shia. You bastard. Naruto yelled as he jumped towards the giant beast. Lava release. Scorching fist. His fist was enveloped by lava as he shot a giant blob of it through his fist. It smashed into one of Shia's heads and made the Hydra roar in pain. Naruto flipped in the air and started to channel his wind affinity, making a hammer of wind to smash Shia in the back, making its legs give out momentarily. Yes, I can easily use lava now. You can't use it regularly. My natural affinity is wind and water, 
Ice is a hell of a lot easier than lava. And I'm not going to take two weeks to practice it. I have better things to do with my dash. He was eaten before he could finish. Crap. Naruto yelled as he slid down one of Shia's throats. The second time. The experience in the 44th training grounds was not something to forget. He sighed. Clone indigestion again? No. Naruto understood what he wanted. Heartburn instead. I wonder how this is going to feel. Naruto said as he felt himself slide further down Shia's neck. Lava chakra mode. His entire body became surrounded by scorching lava. Shia licked his lips in satisfaction. The redhead tasted terrible, but the feeling of eating him made him feel wonderful inside. And then the feeling got warmer and warmer, until his entire torso was alight with heat. Shia tried to turn to his many heads to his body, but couldn't as he felt his body inflate with a burning sensation. He then erupted in an explosion of lava. Oh shit, it burns. Naruto cried as he crawled out of a puddle of lava, his entire body surrounded by a hell of it. How did Rashi deal with this? Hard work and dedication. Well, I'm a lazy bugger dash, Naruto gagged at the scent of Shia's innards. Oh god, it smells. Shia's heads were flailing around still alive, their eyes locked onto Naruto as they tried, and failed, to get to him. Naruto frowned at the sight of the still alive beast. Well then, interesting. He sat idly and watched them for a minute. They're still not dead yet. He shrugged, all well. Lava release, volcano bomb. He took a deep breath as he felt his chakra drain and the entire valley become nothing more than a bowl for the burning rock. We kill it. Naruto looked displeased. Yeah, we did, but such an anticlimax. A bit too easy, says the one who got eaten, but the redhead was mostly unscathed. That was surprisingly boring, Naruto said dissatisfied as he stared at the sunset. Sun had left a few minutes ago, giving the former blonde a very loud and emotional goodbye. Naruto was just waiting for the headache he had to fade. Are you joking? Laxus said as he gave the redhead a what-the-hell look. We fought an army of monsters and the cannibal. That isn't very boring. Naruto sighed. Well, Shia was always a bit of a bitch. I honestly thought it would take more to kill him, but knew. All it takes was melting his insides. That usually kills a being. Melting their insides, Mistigan added. Naruto still didn't look satisfied as he took out his communication lacrima from his coat pocket. The thing glowed for a moment before the flickering forms of both sea grain and Altair appeared. Oh, hello there, Naruto said with a wolfish grin. My, my Altair, you take my breath away. He smirked at the slightly uncomfortable look on her face. Oh, and you too, see. You make me hot and bothered also. Seagrain rolled his eyes at the sarcasm. I'm positive we all get a little hot and bothered looking at you. But business first. The dragon? Well, it wasn't a dragon. It was a hydra. Looks like a dragon, but not the same anatomy or magic. Naruto looked back to the mountains behind him. It's dead and the body is completely gone. The council would have wanted it for inspection. Good thing it's gone. That's why I like you, see. Naruto said with a grin, everyone on a council seems to have their own agenda sooner or later, but you're not an asshole like the rest of them. He never said Seagrain didn't have an agenda, just that he wasn't an asshole. Oh, and you too, Altair, not an asshole, but that ass though. Seagrain frowned and shook his head, just no. Naruto looked mild also, yeah, that was a bit too blatant. It was fun to flirt but straight up things like that just make it weird. Well, good job anyways. He gave them a nod. We'll just pay fairy tale. Naruto pursed his lips. Now Laxus really can take part of his share. Fine. Oh Naruto, one more thing. Yeah? Seagrain smiled at him. Thank you. Naruto smiled at his friend as the lacrima cut out. I don't like him, Mistigan said after a few moments. Laxus nodded in agreement. Well, I like him. Naruto said a bit defensively of his friend. He's practically the only person on both mine and Fairy Tail's side. Doesn't mean we need to like him. Naruto shrugged. I can respect that. Though the day Sea Grain becomes some sort of evil megalomaniac is the day I jump off a building. Excuse me? They've been kidnapped. Naruto blinked at Mirajane's words. Okay. I need. He tried to find words to say, not expecting to be yelled at the minute he entered the guild. I need you to slow down and explain it thoroughly, and get Makarov. Makarov seemingly appeared, we got a call from the Akane Resort. Some unknown mages attacked Natsu, Urza, Grey, and Lucy. We haven't received any words from them, and there are no signs of death. So they must be captured. He honestly thought Natsu was stronger than that. Something suddenly clicked. They captured Urza. His family member, he thinks. Yeah, Mira Jane said gravely. Naruto sighed. Is there any other information? Makarov nodded. It seems Urza knew them from eyewitness accounts. The redhead groaned, of course. Why did nobody mention their troubled past and save us the trouble? 
Makarov didn't want to mention that Naruto was being hypocritical with the statement. Do you need help finding them? Not that they really had any help to give him. Naruto shook his head. Nah, I can find an Uzumaki anywhere. He really couldn't, but he could sense Natsu, and no doubt wherever he is, large spikes of power would follow. Makarov and Mirajane accepted the answer, knowing Naruto operated in strange ways. The redhead sighed at not even getting to sit down and exited the guild he just entered a few minutes prior. Not that he didn't enjoy a relaxing walk. He spent enough time with Kakashi to appreciate the little things like a simple walk. Of course, this was a bit more than a simple walk, having to cross the ocean using his somewhat rusty chakra control. Naruto honestly tried to look on the bright side of the situation. He had plenty of alone time to, to think. Yeah, he was bored. Hopefully whatever he was walking into would have a lot more excitement than his little scuffle with Shia. And if anybody could suppress the apparent strongest team in Fairy Tail, they must be a pleasure to fight. Not that Naruto personally believed that Natsu's squad was the strongest, the temporary team Naruto, the name for the moment, was completely badass. Actually, him alone could be the strongest team if he put any effort into it. He would go complete Kakashi mode and read his godfather's book as he walked, but he had only one copy, and there was no way he would risk it getting wet. The book was even older than he was, and he didn't like the chances of it being repaired if broken. He was humming the soundtrack for the Princess Gale movies when he actually noticed it. The very ugly and big tower in the sky, big was an understatement. It was like the giant Jibitsu Kuyumi stock thing from the Fourth Shinobi War. Clouds rested only about halfway up the thing, and the top was hazy looking, it was so high up. Was it where Urza and the others were taken? Probably, it had the stereotypical bad guy hideout feel to it. He walked closer to it, halt. He heard a voice yell. Naruto raised an eyebrow at the sight of what looked like guards. All of them had very strange body structures, and the animals with them looked even stranger. Hello, Naruto said with a wave. I am a traveler on a quest to find every redhead on the planet. I heard there might be one here. Have you seen one? Two of the guards looked at each other. Well, there is that one. Should we tell him? One of them said. We should have him come closer, the other one said. Then smirked. Then we can make him a slave. Naruto blinked. Um, you really shouldn't say that loud enough so I can hear you. His expression hardened. I would love to make you suffer, but dash, his eyes turned red, and the two guards fell down screaming. I have to find that redhead before something bad happens. He glared at the strange pink animals, and they healed, running away from the spinning red eyes. He stepped over his Tsukuyumi victims and walked into the front door. The first thing he noticed was the presence of a lot of people, which he didn't really notice before. Gathering nature chakra for Senjutsu was difficult in the middle of the ocean, since all of the nature was at the bottom of the ocean, and he had to keep moving. So he was going without accurate sensing for this one. He blinked as he saw Natsu, with a strange cat head on. This entire place was nothing but strange. Hey Natsu, Naruto said slowly, trying to assess the situation. I don't know what kind of shit you're into. He trailed off for a moment, eyeing him being tied up in a cat costume, but I'm pretty sure that girl is underage. No. A man made of? Blocks? A man made of blocks said. It isn't like that. Miliana just likes cats. That is so not dandy. Hey. Naruto said defensively, it is what it is. I'm just calling it as I see it. Naruto. Natsu called from underneath the mask, help me. I'm trapped. The girl, who must be Miliana, looked at him with sparkles in her eyes, you have whiskers like a kitty cat. Naruto raised an eyebrow and rubbed his whiskers, oh no. These are fox whiskers. An idea suddenly came, though I have a really cool kitty cat if you want to see her. He smirked at her reaction. Yes. She ran towards him, enamored. The block man tried to grab her but couldn't. Okay, Naruto said slowly as he activated his takeover magic. Look at my eyes. No. He wasn't going to Tsukuyumi the innocent girl. His eyes warped into the Rinnegan as he reached into the god realm. Naruto? A silky feminine voice asked. Hey, I'm at chan Naruto said to her mentally. She was probably his favorite tail beast. She was the most normal and naturally had a very caring and thoughtful attitude, something the other tailed beasts, especially Kurama, lacked. How are you, Narachan? Matatabi asked excitedly. Sun just visited you not too long ago. I know. But I've been waiting to call you out and I have the perfect opportunity right now. Oh? Her smooth voice was laced with curiosity, common for a cat, and that would be? Naruto took a breath. Hopefully, this would work. His Rinnegan pulsed as he activated both the animal path and the azure path. A plume of smoke appeared to his side, and when it faded. Well, Naruto said slightly shocked, I did not expect that to work so well. He thought nothing would happen due to the differences between magic and chakra, but apparently, they did work together. 
Miliana's eyes became brighter and brighter until the pure excitement she radiated was palpable. Matatabi stretched her new, actual cat-sized body. This feels a lot nicer than I would have thought. A kitty. An actual fire kitty. The two-tailed hellcat looked at the girl in front of her. Oh, you are cute. Well, Miliana, Naruto said to her, this is my friend Matatabi. Matatabi-chan, this is Miliana, cat lover extraordinaire. Well, at least he thinks she is, from what the room they were in told him. Miliana ran to Matatabi and hugged her, not caring that she was on fire. Oh, my so soft. She rubbed her face into the cat's fire. It feels so nice. Matatabi purred slightly. Is this all you want me to do? Narachan? Because I'm perfectly fine with cuddling. She suddenly giggled. Get it? Perfectly fine with cuddling. Naruto erupted into laughter. That was why he liked Matatabi. They had the same sense of humor. That. Blockman looked shocked, using her weakness like that. So not Dan Dash. He was punched in the face by Natsu before he could finish. Finally, Natsu yelled as the cat head came off his head. He smiled at Happy before looking at Naruto. Why are you here? Naruto shrugged. Urza is a family member. I have to help her. Natsu gave him a smile almost identical to his 16-year-old self. Good. Because Urza is my family also. He ran off into a hallway, no doubt going to look for the female redhead. Hey, Matachan, Naruto said to the cat, take care of little Miliana and Dash. He looked to the unconscious man on the floor, block man. If anything goes wrong, I'm pretty sure you can extend into full size and carry them out. The tailed beast nodded as she was embraced by Miliana. Have fun, Narachan. As he walked out, she turned to the girl holding her. You are so cute. Natsu. Naruto yelled to his guildmate, let me handle the bird man, and you go ahead. Natsu nodded and ran away. The bird man looked at him. You challenge Fukuro. He was met with a sigh. I've been overusing the word strange today. The redhead muttered, but there is just no other words for Dash. He looked at Fukuro. That. What is that supposed to mean? Fukuro yelled. It means I have no idea what the hell you are. Naruto looked very confused. I mean an owl man. What the hell is that? The immortal looked to another man. And you are? Simon. One of Urza's friends. Naruto nodded deeply. Okay. So are you going to help me fight owl man? Simon looked away. I use darkness magic. But Fukuro can see in pitch black with his night vision. No, he can't. Both Simon and Fukuro looked at Naruto confused. What? Well, Naruto started. Light is color. If there is no light, then nothing has color. Night vision doesn't work unless there is some sort of light in the area. Because night vision works by amplifying light. How do I see, though? Fukuro asked, completely dumbfounded. Well, Al's dash, he gestured to Fukuro, and other nocturnal animals have strong enough eyes to see infrared. So you can't see us. You can see the heat we emanate. You can easily run into a wall since they don't emit heat. I. Fukuro looked astonished. I. AGF. Naruto kicked him in the face. Science lessons are done. Naruto yelled. His distraction worked. Now I shall beat the shit out of you. Ice release. Ice spear. An ice spear shot out of the ground and towards Fukuro who used his rather large arm to smash it. Naruto blinked in confusion. Didn't ice work well against flying types? He gasped. You're not a flying type. He yelled in shock. You're a normal type. He growled. Fighting it is. Fukuro had no idea what the redhead was spewing as his enemy rushed him. Naruto flipped into the air spinning his foot downwards into an axe kick. To his surprise Fukuro didn't even try to move or block. The owl head opened up to massive proportions. Naruto fell right into his awaiting mouth. I am so stupid. Naruto said to himself. Trapped in the surprisingly spacious stomach of his enemy. Eaten two times in a few days. Three times in my entire life. You would think I would learn after the first time. He felt his magic being drained. He raised an eyebrow at what was happening to him. Luckily his chakra stayed, so only his lackluster takeover skills would be drained. I don't want to kill him, but... Naruto sighed. I need to get out. He couldn't do what he did with Shia, Fukuro would be completely melted. And he couldn't make his eater explode like he did with Orochimaru's snake. He kinda wanted Owl Man alive since he was proof that people were illegally practicing bestiality. Naruto had an idea. Oh, this will be good. Boil release. Gray gritted his teeth as he barely kept Fukuro's jaws from clamping around him. The owl man was laughing maniacally at the thought of another meal, before he suddenly gagged, his entire body heating up. Steam started to escape his mouth as he started to shake, before throwing up. Throwing up all over Gray. The ice make user stared wide-eyed as a mixture of water and mice fell on top of him, Naruto coming out last and landing painfully on his stomach. Wow, the redhead said, getting up and stumbling a few feet away. That was not nice. I should really stop being so weak and actually try to fight, because that was plain pathetic of me. 
Gray gagged at the stuff on him. Oh, hello. Naruto said to his guild mate, thanks for trying to save me, but I already got him. He had the knocked out owl hybrid on the floor. I have no idea what is up with that guy. I mean, just look at him. Naruto raised an eyebrow at Gray curled up on the floor. You're injured, both physically and mentally. He looked at Simon. I'm gonna go ahead. I'll just leave Gray with you, all right? Simon nodded. Naruto was about to leave before he remembered. Oh, I left one of my friends with Miliana and Block Guy. You can take Gray to her. She has a little bit of healing magic if you need it. He then walked off, still feeling slightly unbalanced from being eaten. Damn, Naruto said as he eyed Urza. We use Amaki really have it. He said admirably as he looked at Urza's clothing. Naruto. Urza yelled in shock. What are you doing here? Naruto shrugged. I heard my cousin, or at least I think you're my cousin, was in trouble, so I came to check. He looked at her opponent. Thank God you're not a guy, because I do not want any man touching my innocent little cousin when she's dressed like that. He received a glare from Urza. Stop it, Naruto. Hey, I didn't say you looked bad. I meant that you look way too good for a man to be touching you. You definitely have the Uzumaki figure. Urza sighed. This is my fight. Nope. Naruto shook his head. It isn't. Not just me, but all of fairy tale is your family. We don't abandon family. He stood in front of Urza. Now let me deal with this absolutely sexy woman in front of me while you go to the top of this tower, because the leader is always at the top of the tower. As the female redhead left, Naruto gave the lady in front of him a charismatic smile. Hi there, beautiful. On Naruto, Uzumaki Naruto. And you are? Ikaruga, she said calmly. Well then, Ikaruga, I really don't want to hurt you. He noticed the look on her face. Not that I'm calling you weak or anything. It's just that we could. Tongue wrestle or something? Tongue wrestle. She said with the you've got to be kidding me look. Did you really say that? So stupid. Naruto smirked. You say that because you know you'll be the one to lose the tongue battle. You know I read that in a book before, she said thoughtfully. Naruto's expression lit up. You read Ika Ika Book 7. He said in glee of such a beautiful lady reading his book. I wrote that. Ikaruga's perfectly composed composure broke for a moment as she blushed. You wrote that? She received a sly smile. It seems like you're a reader of my series. He started to approach her. How about we go and reenact the battle between the female spy and the partner she betrayed? A true masterpiece in his own opinion. The pink-haired sword wielder took a step back as Naruto got closer. I... I don't know. Naruto put a finger on her lips gently. Sh just give in to the dreams of Aika Aika. Ikaruga was red as she shook, before she finally realized that he was the enemy, and oh. She yelled as she drew her sword and slashed him across the chest. I... I am so sorry, she said, looking a little bummed out to have killed the author of her favorite books. Naruto frowned as he channeled chakra into his healing ability, making the wound close in seconds. Hey, that wasn't very nice. I'm supposed to be tied up first. Ikaruga looked at him in shock. You're perfectly fine. The redhead thought for a moment. I cannot die from being stabbed or sliced. Naruto lied to her. I can only be killed after having an incredible time with a pretty woman. He mentally prayed to any god he could think of for her to believe him. The woman started to calm down until she regained her composure. I would have to test that first. Naruto let out a disappointed sigh. Oh well. We're gonna have to fight. He regained his smirk, kinda like the fight in the fifth book. Ikaruga still kept a calm expression despite blushing. She knew exactly what the fight he mentioned and knew exactly what it escalated into, and she completely resolved herself to read the entire series again when she got home. Naruto knew that he shouldn't hold back against an enemy because she was good looking, but he was strong enough to say screw it and do whatever he wanted. Besides, the satisfaction he got from making her scorn was so very worth it. He simply leaned away from a slash of her sword, but instead of parrying with a blow of his own, he leaned forward and gave her a squeeze. He swore he saw the ethereal figure of Jiraiya giving him a thumbs up as he felt up his foe. Ikaruga was still trying to stay unperturbed as she spun around, her sword hitting empty air again. She felt a hand run down her backside, but she couldn't see her foe. You see, I really didn't try against that owl guy. Naruto's smooth voice whispered in her ear, making her freeze. So I ended up being eaten, but... She felt her entire body shiver at the word. But now I'm going to give you my all. He chuckled at how sexual that sounded. The leader of Trinity Raven, a group of assassins that was hired by the leader of this tower, tried to swing around again, but her katana was gone. Quite the sword this is. Akagura swung her head in the direction of the voice. Naruto was across the room holding her sword. You see, I once got really into swords. I went around collecting a lot of cool ones. He stared at her blade with respect. What is its name? Mujetsuryu her voice said without her consent. Naruto smiled at her. A nice name, he said. 
before her sheath appeared in his hands. Akagura looked at it in shock as he sheathed her sword. How? The redhead threw the sword back to her. I'm actually very powerful. I could defeat you, but I'd rather not. He walked up to her, and Akagura knew there was no real point to fight. Though I do want something. Answers. Akagura nodded, completely out of fight. What is this place? Naruto asked as he got closer and closer to her. The Tower of Heaven. Naruto nodded. What is this place for? Akagura felt her heart start to race as Naruto approached her. It's for the R system. Naruto was only a few meters away. What is the R system for? It's... She felt her breath become labored at the sight of him. It's called the revive system. They want to revive someone. Naruto cupped her cheek, and Akagura felt her heart stop. Who? He asked softly. His name. Akagura felt any pride she had leave as she savored his touch. His name is Zeref. And like that, all the warmth from Naruto was gone. What? He asked seriously. Akagura trembled slightly as his hand left her cheek. The black wizard. Naruto turned around to where Urza went. That is not smart. He started to walk. But he couldn't as Akagura grabbed his hand. Wait. She yelled desperately. Aren't you? Aren't you? She blushed. Aika Aika. She said in a whisper. Naruto sighed at the fact he made her completely want him. Twenty seconds ago it was fine. But Zeref. Not that I don't want to act out my books with you. It's just priorities. He could now see the ethereal figure of Jiraiya giving him a thumbs down for rejecting a woman. Oh, Akagura said sadly. Naruto grabbed Akagura's hands with both of his. How about this? He said as he formed a Horatian marker on her hand. With this marker, I can teleport to wherever you are. Really? She had never heard of such an astonishing power. Naruto nodded. What do you think about becoming a movie star? What? Naruto smirked at her. A movie SD dash. His eyes snapped to the sky. No. Akagura looked worried. What's happening? The redhead kept his eyes up, Etherion. What the hell, Seagrain? What do you mean, Etherion? Naruto looked at her and gave her a reassuring smile. You go and find your teammates. I'm gonna go deal with that. He disappeared before she could answer. On the roof, he looked at the sky as the giant beam of energy approached. No bija to use the bijadama, Naruto said grimly. I guess I'll have to dash. He noticed the giant lacrima on the roof. Oh shit. Whoever owns this tower is one son of a bitch. He ran towards the lacrima and placed both of his hands on it. A chain of storage lacrima throughout the tower. Someone wants to absorb Etherion. He felt around it more. A cap of 2.7 billion ideas for the entire chain. Ideas, the unit of measurement for magic, that might be enough to resurrect a man. If he was dead. He looked back up to the sky. The beam was almost at its target. That beam is at least 5 billion ideas minimum. And whoever made this lacrima chain did not account for any extra energy this place will still be destroyed, unless. He sighed, this is not going to be pleasant. The beam hit. In an instant, he felt the 2.7 billion ideas cap for the crystal chain fill. He felt his body burn as the other 3 billion plus ideas entered his body. It needed a place to go, and Naruto wasn't going to let a place filled with innocent people die. He'll play the hero again. He could vaguely feel Matatabi send some chakra into him. The rest of her power was being used to protect the people with her. He used the small bit of chakra to try and reinforce his body before it exploded. And right as Naruto felt his body start to give out, it ended. Holy shit, Naruto said as he shook uncontrollably, his body twitching from the power in him. I wasn't vaporized. His body was paralyzed for a few moments, having no idea what to do with the power inside of it. After a few minutes, he tried to move, only for his body to fall. He broke through the now crystal floor into the level below him. He idly lay, unable to move as he saw his friend Seagrain blow Simon away. His mind was blank for a moment before he used the willpower that has won him so many battles to try and force his body to move. Ah, it doesn't matter, Seagrain yelled, but the tone of distraught was there under his maniacal yell. Because everyone in this tower will be dead when I'm Don Dash. Naruto smirked slightly at the sight of Natsu slamming Seagrain in the face. And then it fell as he saw Natsu eat Etherion. Naruto saw Seagrain stand up at the side of the choking Natsu. Etherion was composed of a lot more than just fire. Maybe he couldn't stand to face his friend, but Natsu. Natsu was more than willing to beat the shit out of the blue-haired man. Naruto used Horation, guiding thunder to transfer all the energy inside of Natsu except fire magic into himself. He put a marker on Natsu when he saved him from the cat room. His body started to convulse as he absorbed millions of ideas, with a smaller amount coursing through his pink-haired guild mate, enough to send him into his dragon force. It was worth it. He decided as he felt his magic coils explode, them already being strained from the previous energy he absorbed. 
The magic in him was running rampant and completely destroying his insights. Well, it was time to see if he was really a god. If he did die, which was very likely, he should find himself in a poker game with the Rakuto Sinin and all of the Bija. Of course, that's if he was actually a god. If not, well, who knows? Only I can see Zerif. I am his chosen one. Naruto clenched his fists at Siegra. No, Jalal's words. That wasn't Zerif he talked about. Were people really using his name to justify such evil? Five years. Jalal yelled as he started the abyss break. I'll make it in five years. There was such irony in Natsu, one of Zerif's greatest legacies, defeating Jalal, the one who wanted to revive Zerif. The irony made him want to both laugh and cry at the same time. It was honestly funny, and it honestly made him feel terrible inside. He forced himself up, making his way over to Urza. Hey, Urza. His voice was hoarse. Naruto. Urza cried as she looked at her apparent relative. You're still here. She noticed the state he was in. What happened? Naruto let out a dry laugh. Etherion is over 5 billion ideas. Jalal only had the setup to absorb 2.7 billion. Urza gasped. No, you didn't. The red-haired male gave a weak smirk. Yes, I did. He looked over to the down Jalal. Seagrain was, no is, a close friend of mine. You take Natsu and go. I'll deal with the tower. No. She yelled. You don't understand. The entire thing will blow without a sacrifice. I understand perfectly, Naruto said, looking more mature than Urza had ever seen him. Urza, I'm not going to let my cute little relative die. And Natsu has to live. I promised a friend that. He looked at the blue bubble-like thing near them. Go. I can't. I already let Simon down. Naruto put a hand on her shoulder. You know, I was eaten by a man named Fukuro. When he threw me up, I landed on top of Gray. I marked him with my teleportation technique. What does that mean, Dash? Urza and Natsu vanished in a flash of red. You know, Naruto started to the unconscious Jalal. I'm supposed to jump off a building because of you. But I think this a bit more extreme, so it should be fine. He hobbled over to the bubble, letting himself fall in. He sunk in, feeling the entire tower around him glow. He would never notice how much he looked like his godfather in his own final moments as he sunk deeper and deeper into the unknown. I am one soft asshole, aren't I? The redhead thought to himself, smiling as he saw what looked like the sun as he sunk, and now in the next chapter of my autobiography, escaping from the magic jelly of doom. It always made him a bit awestruck that the body naturally floated. He remembered when he was young, falling into a lake, and when he threw away all of his oxygen, flailing around, his body naturally floated upwards. And right before he met his demise, he broke the surface, having just enough strength to lift his head and breathe. Of course now he could hold his breath for much longer, and the natural instinct to flail was gone from years of deadly training. Maybe that was the reason he wasn't a corpse floating still like the debris of a destroyed boat, but like a piece of driftwood, still floating aimlessly around the ocean, its journey not done until it hits land. Mistigan. He said to the man in front of him weakly, you're a bastard. Yeah, the prince said softly as he hoisted the redhead up his ankles sinking into the water he was standing on. It. Naruto drifted into unconsciousness for a moment. You knew your counterpart had the same name as you. That Seagreen wasn't the other you. I did. Naruto weakly held his eyes open. Mystigan didn't have his mask on, and Naruto stared into the face that two men made him trust. I. I don't really blame you, though. Pain breeds hatred, and hatred breeds death. It's a cycle. Rest, Mystigan commanded gently. Naruto didn't need to be asked twice but he had a question before he rested. Hey, Mystigan? Yes, Naruto? He opened his eyes weakly. Do you? Do you know takeover magic? I know the concept. I. Naruto stared at the sun, looking a little lost. My magic is ruined. I need you to channel some of yours. That's dangerous. I know. Mystigan stayed silent and complied. The foreign magic felt like liquid fire as it traveled through his destroyed magic system, but Naruto held on and tried to activate his takeover. You bitch. The angry voice of Karama rang. I've been trying to enter you for such a long grigging time. I just felt the link start and had to force my way into your body. Hi Karama, Naruto muttered. Mystigan paid no mind as he walked. My sister told me what you did. Why didn't you call me before you absorbed a freaking juby worth of magic? Naruto couldn't help but smile weakly at the concern lacing his friend's voice. You play poker. A poker game does not last a few days, you morons. What if you died? We have no idea if you're a god or not. I dash, for the first time since his father's death, Karama's words voiced raw emotion. You're my best freaking friend. I would have found wherever your soul resided and would have fought even the goddamn Shinigami to get to you. Then I would have shoved the Hokage Mountain up your ass before taking you back. I. 
Naruto started to drift away. He found himself inside of his mindscape, the furry form of Kurama in front of him. I'm... I'm ready to die, to give my life to protect. You might be ready, but I'm not. Call me a greedy asshole because I am. You should see me play poker. Naruto smiled as he felt Kurama pick him up and place him against his fuzzy body. Hey. He said as he savored the safe feeling of his partner's fur. I know I would have been fine, because I had people to protect and dash. And you truly find strength when protecting your precious people. I freaking hate that Haku dude. Naruto chuckled softly as he finally fell asleep. Damn, she can sing. Naruto said with wonder as he watched Mira Jane perform from a more private section of the second floor of the newly made fairy tale building. He downed his drink. She's a complete package, isn't she? Mystigan, who didn't have his hood on since nobody could see them, eyed him with concern. Are you sure you were supposed to be drinking? Naruto shook his head. Am I supposed to? No, but I'll be fine. Kurama had fixed a lot of the damage Etherion had caused. The fox was coming in and out using a seal filled with Mystigan's chakra and some of Naruto's sealing expertise. The redhead's magic system would take weeks to fix properly, so the fox would have to force himself into Naruto's body to fix him. And shouldn't you tell everybody you're still alive? Naruto shrugged. Makarov knows. Besides, my condition isn't stable enough. I don't want to die 20 minutes after revealing myself. Also, Natsu will no doubt dogpile me the minute he sees me. I want at least one more day to prepare. Mystican sighed as he watched Gajil perform. He's quite the interesting new member, isn't he? The redhead chuckled at how bad his singing was. I love it. I think he'll fit in just fine. The piercings actually remind me of someone I used to know. He said, thinking about pain. A member of your past in the elemental nations? Just wait until I get to that part. Naruto had been telling Mystigan about his younger days. He felt as if someone should know. It would help when he wrote his book. Naruto groaned as he wriggled his fingers. Mystigan raised an eyebrow. Maybe we should go back to Windy. She wasn't fully done when we left. Maybe we should go back, Naruto said. Not for me to be healed, but for you to talk to her. Naruto shook his head at the prince. You just abandoned her like that, to that very, interesting guild. Both of the men knew Rubal was not really alive, but he kept Windy safe. I had to, Mystigan said with a shrug. There was an anima that was drawing large amounts of power. In the end, I just couldn't go back. Well, the look on her face when she saw you made my entire year so you better go back and see her eventually. Mystigan nodded before looking out of a window. Speaking of anima. He trailed off. Go, Naruto said with a smile. Have fun. The other Jalal disappeared into the mist. Naruto saw Jet and Droy call Gajil outside, their eyes brimming with hatred. They need to release their pain before their hatred hurts those they love, Naruto sighed. Always conflict. He smirked. Who am I kidding? I love it. What kind of bullying is this? Jet and Droy turned around. El Axis. The blonde walked up, his new headphones shining. Laxis I Gajil. So this is the one who did a number on my guild. He started to walk forward. Did Gramps let you join just so you don't bust the guild again? It was posed as a question, but it was fully obvious he didn't want an answer. Gajil stared, choosing not to speak. That. Laxis clenched his fists. That is why people look down on us. He yelled in fury. You little piece of shit. Team Shadow Gear wisely took a step back. Laxis sparked. I heard things as I traveled. Fairy tale isn't anything special. Fairy tale is done for. Thunder seemed to roar in the clear sky. In the worst. Fairy tale is filled with weaklings. Weaklings. A giant lightning bolt shot down from the sky onto Gajil. The dragon slayer roared with pain as thousands of volts coursed through him. Team Shadow Gear watched in fear. It's your fault. Laxus yelled in anger as his fist sparked. Your fault. He brought his fist down. Only for it to be caught. Laxus, you're going too far. Naruto. Team Shadow Gear gasped. You're supposed to be dead. Naruto smirked at the blonde. Did you really think Etherion could kill me? You know exactly who I am. I do know who you are. I also know you're weakened. Naruto gave him a bland look. Can you take the giant frigging beam of doom and not be hurt? Laxus looked past the redhead to Gajil. He helped soil our guild's name. Naruto let go of his fist and put it on Laxus's shoulder. And he'll make it strong again. He's ruthless unlike other members. He enjoys making people hurt, something you value. The only thing keeping Laxus from exploding was the respect he held for Naruto's strength, the respect he has from all the times he watched scary movies with the Red Devil as the villain. I'm gonna rebuild the guild from its ashes. Into something stronger. Naruto stared deeply into his eyes. And why would there be ashes? Laxus turned around and started to walk away. Because this guild is already on fire. I'm just gonna put it out. Thank you for watching.
If you like this video, simply tap the screen to explore more captivating stories we're sure you'll adore. And please, remember to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to stay updated on our latest stories. Don't forget to check the description for the author's information.